I'm Edith Holland Jones. I am a judge on the U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. Fantastic. Well, we've got some great questions, so we'll just hop right in. What first drew your attention to President Coolidge? I had often heard about President Coolidge, prob probably when I was an economics undergraduate uh, and my, looking at macroeconomics, and it probably had something to do with the uh, Roaring Twenties, mm. <laughs> the prosperity of the ro Roaring Twenties. And was that what, what mentions there were of Coolidge? Do you remember if there was any uh, painting of that as this was a failure or this was a, a fleeting success, sort of the common narrative? Or? Uh, the uh, uh, v Coolidge, very little of the uh, then economic success was attributed to President Coolidge. And of course, everyone had heard of the aphorism Silent Cow and the joke that uh, the, the lady had asked him what m made a bet about whether he would answer in two words, right. and he said no. So that was about all we knew about him at that point. Right. Well, sort of s swifting, uh, uh, changing from that to what people should be learning about Coolidge. We just, uh, you, you were just on a panel talking about many different aspects of his legacy from different angles. What are some of the most important aspects of his legacy that you think have the most to teach us today, and maybe young future generations in particular? I think there's been a great emphasis, or will be, in this uh, centennial celebration on his uh, character, the formation of character as a product of a moral upbringing and We've been talking about classical education. As a statesman, he, uh, rep he uh, uh, enshrined the highest ideals of American government as it was traditionally understood. And that is to say that the federal government was a government of limited and enumerated powers. And that the reason for that was to uh, allow people to prosper independently in freedom uh, through, the, through the success of the market and commerce. He was against putting taxation on the back of, uh, of uh, the citizens, and he was against government going outside the bounds that the Constitution had created for it. Hmm. Maybe to build on that, you mentioned how there's been a, lo a loss of appreciation for the wisdom behind the limits and definitions of this branch does this. That's just the end of that story. Like, this is the branch that does that. <laughs> uh, and that, that, of course, helped shape some of the decisions Coolidge was making in terms of the budget. This is not what the federal government should do. This is what the state should do. Um, and maybe that was tapping into some of his experience in more local and state level offices, and sort of building down from the federal government to the state in a uh, local level. What do you think Coolidge's participation in local, and maybe just localism writ large, and sort of building local institutions has to uh, offer uh, modern America today? Well, we're, we've always been a very mobile society. Uh, but when people settle down and begin to raise children, they are functioning in communities. And the communities start at the level of the school or the church or the community organization. And that's where the vitality of American society resides. Now, the fact that we were largely agricultural or moving from an agricultural to uh, industrial society at that time, and that uh, trend has continued until many of us reside in cities today, does not diminish the fact that we all 
end up in smaller communities and we have to build from those communities into the well-being of a large city and then a much larger state. So it is sort of a ground, he would have advocated a ground up resurgence of active citizenship, it seems to me. Mm. Is there anything about Coolidge that you feel might be deserving of special attention this year, celebrate part of his centennial? Oh yes, uh, several things. First of all, uh, Coolidge was an advocate of fiscal restraint. He saw that as a moral principle uh, that the government should not take from people more, more than it gives back in services, I suppose you could say. And obviously, exercising fiscal restraint is something that our government has lost sight of and very much needs to recover, I'm afraid. Uh, he was also one of the foremost right presidential writers. He was the, one of the last presidents who wrote most of his own speeches. And when you read his speeches, you will see that they are deeply uh, imbued with the love of the Constitution, with the love of freedom, with the love of his fellow man. And uh, you gain an appreciation for the patriotism that suffused what he did. And finally, I do not think that he had this fixation on globalism uh, that uh, so many people are getting today. Uh, uh, he was, he, he, I believe his views were that America is a citizen of the world, but we are not behind the world doing whatever the world is doing, nor are we destined to lead the world in everything, that we are Americans first. Mm 